Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Baggies broadcast. It's another special episode, this one available to be watched online. You're joined by myself uh, and, of course, our Albion man, a man who arrived home in the wee hours of this morning, Mr. Joe Massey. Uh, how are you feeling, mate? It was a pretty pretty bad day for the Baggies, wasn't it? Um, well, yeah, it was a bad day, I suppose. I mean, I am I am exhausted. I got in at 2 a.m. Um, I know you weren't very happy with me last night because I didn't want to do a video um, at the ground because I just wanted to get home, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. Then your response to that was, please, can we do a video podcast in the morning? Because I wondered why you were just so desperate for everyone to see your face. And now I know, mate, because you have got strong beard game at the minute. It's been growing, mate. I've been growing it out growing it out because you know what it was this hair going means i've got to grow yeah. this one out i mean you are looking very handsome right? it's, it's, it's clicked into place last night i was like he really <laughs> wants to do this video <laughs> i mean you couldn't wait to jump on board the video podcast last night could you? you have been desperate for these video podcasts yeah you know what it was mate it wasn't it wasn't about this at all it was about pleasing all of our all of our viewers and listeners oh, mate. Wait, you, want... you think this pleases people oh yeah people want to know what people want to hear from you mate yeah, but they do hear from me, mate. They don't need to see me. Oh, but they love to see you. They love to see you. It's all face. about this, mate. It's all about you. It's all about this, isn't it? <laughs> that is. It's, it's almost. It's almost Billichesque. It's getting to that point. It's Billichesque. It is Billichesque. Billich and Rob Gurney from BBC WM. They used to both <laughs> sit in press conferences and admire each other's beards. <laughs> oh, Rob's. Rob's is special, though. Rob's is special. Yeah. I mean, this holds nothing against Rob. They were funny together, those two. They really were. Yeah, um, what wasn't funny though? I mean, relegation confirmed, Joe. I mean, I think I think everyone kind of expected it, didn't they? Everyone kind of knew it was coming. There was there was still some fight. There was still, you know, I mean, Allardyce came out speaking to BT before the game, saying there's there's a minute amount of hope, and obviously that's always going to be the case when mathematically it's not done and dusted. But now it is. Yeah, is it awful to say I'm relieved? Is it awful to I, say that? I think a lot of fans are the same, you know. Um, look, last night in many ways summed up Albion's season. Look, the first thing you've got to say is you don't get relegated at Arsenal away. Mm. You get relegated over the course of a season. All right, we lost to Arsenal last night. It was a crazy... Like I thought Albion played very well at the Emirates mm. last night. Um, I thought they probably deserved a point on the balance of play. I think for the first 20 minutes, they were absolutely outstanding. Um with the exception of uh, Bakuya Saka, Saka, Arsenal had nothing. And I mean mm. absolutely nothing. Um, but again, Albion didn't take their chances when they were on top, as Aladoy said afterwards. Arsenal, with a bit of quality, finally scored for Saka setting up a Mill Smith row. And then obviously Pepe cost £72 million. Pounds, he curls one in. And look, it was it, there was very little between the two teams, really, over the course of 90 minutes. But that does sum up Albion's season when they're on top. They haven't taken their chances, have they? They haven't taken their chances. Um, they gave Arsenal a really good game. It, it was an even-ish encounter, I'd say. But like I said, right at the off, you don't get relegated at Arsenal away. Um, there is a story of the season. And look, we all knew it was coming. And, and to be honest, I think this season is a really strange season. There's been no fans in the ground. I think everyone feels detached from it slightly. It's not... I don't know what the word is, really. It's not apathy, because mm. absolutely everyone... And all Albion fans are still absolutely obsessed with Albion and love the club. But there is just, there's a detachment, isn't there? Yeah. There's a detachment from fans because they haven't been at the games. There's a, there's a detachment for us because we don't feel that emotion, that passion in the stadiums. And it's just been a bit of a, a bit of a, a nothing season, really. Yeah. Um, and for me now, it is a relief that it's over. Because look, in my opinion, we were relegated after Crystal Palace. There's been glimmers of hope here and there, but have we ever really, really looked like getting out of it? If we're being truthfully honest, it, it's always been a massive uphill task. And I think at least now we can start to look forward. This is a big week. Um, mm. We know Allardyce is going to meet with the board, or we thoroughly expect him to meet with the board this week, and hopefully we're going to get a decision on his future. We can stop asking him questions that he just cannot answer. Yeah. Stops. What is your future, Sam? I mean, he's, he's asked fifteen times a week. I mean, I do. I actually feel sorry for him. The amount of questions he gets asked on repeat. Um, and we can start asking questions about the future. We can start asking questions about Grady, Carlin Grant, Jake Livermore, Remain Sawyer's, and by Dianga, Okay, Yakuzlu, Mateus Pereira. It's time we can we can start planning now. Um, mm. So I think I think for me it is a relief. 
Um, for me, it's time to start looking forward. I'm thoroughly expecting Albion to be strong next season. Look, it's a massive shame that the club did so well to get up last year. It's a, and it's all been, it's all ended pretty quickly in a, in a, in a dreadful season with no fans. It's, it's, it's hard to go again. It is hard to go again, but we just got to go again. Let's go again. Let's be strong in the championship and let's get up for the second time in three years. Cause Albion have got a fantastic chance of doing that. I don't want to mm-hmm. dwell on this season anymore. Um, we all know what Albion shortcomings have been. We all know how close um, the improvements they've made under Allardyce. Um, but it's over. We're down. There's been no fans to see it. Let's get fans back in the ground and let's absolutely tear apart the championship. That's my, that's, that's my outlook anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's, it'll be, it should be an entertaining season at least next year. And we'll get we'll kind of get on to that in a little bit. Joe, I mean, the game, one man who stood out for me again uh, was Mateus Pereira. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal. I didn't... As good as Albion were in portions, I thought if anyone looked like scoring, it was it was only going to be Pereira. And my word, the goal! I mean, that is something else. I mean, people will look at at, at Pepe's goal and and maybe the free kick from William, but for me, that Pereira goal is above him. So that was a sensational goal. It was an amazing goal. It was an amazing, amazing goal. It was an amazing goal. Um, the only thing I want to say is it was only as good as Grady Dean Garner's at Everton. So don't, I'm not taking anything yeah, away from yeah, it yeah. because I, I am Mateus Pereira's biggest fan. I love it, but it was only as good as that goal. It was it was an amazing goal. It was like a ten out of ten goal. It was amazing. Um, I just want to give Grady some credit as well because you, you get these like crests of waves, don't you, where people people's stocks are high, and, and Mateus's stock is high. Um, mm. There's no doubt about it. Everyone's talking about him. Um, it was an absolutely sensational goal, and the thing that you loved about it was from the moment he set off, you thought you couldn't not look up and watch, you thought, hey, there's something's going to happen here. Because mm. he carried the ball with such speed. and um, He was just brilliant. And he rode a number of challenges, lashed it in from 20 yards. I mean, it must have been a 50-yard run. It was an absolutely sensational goal. Um, sensational finish. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, he was fantastic. For, for the first 20 minutes in particular, um, he was absolutely dazzling. I mean, he won't. He would have scored a better goal. Um, oh, that, that first one. one. If that effort from 25 yards had gone in, I mean, that was millimetres away. Um, mm. He sent in a cracking ball for Dianga, who, who made contact, stretching, but couldn't quite um, reach it. Daniel Furlan had a big chance in the second half. For me, Furlan yeah. should score six yards out. Um, he's so good at leaping and jumping and, and meeting these crosses. And once he had met it, I think he should score, really. So, yeah, the only thing I'll say on the game is, in terms of a tactical point of view, is... After 20 minutes, not even after 20 minutes, Saka and William were playing on the left-hand side. Yeah. And Saka, I don't know if I don't know if he didn't want to play at left back or if he was just under instruction, but they're essentially playing with two wingers. I mean, he is fantastic. Saka. Oh, yeah. He is at 19 years old. I mean, he's he's their best player by by a mile. Um, but he was playing, they were playing with two wingers. They were playing with two wingers. He'd given up at left back, Sakharad. It was winning, and they were pushing on against Darnell Furlong, and he was their only threat. Yeah. But what confused me was when Allardyce against Wolves hauled off Dar Roche after 25 minutes, which is a bold move to take someone off in the first half. What really surprised me was he didn't bring Matt Phillips across earlier yeah. to give Darnell Furlong some protection because it was absolutely no fault of Darnell Furlong. You can't expect Darnell Furlong to stop William and Saka. You just can't. Mm. Um, so I was a bit surprised he didn't do that earlier because Saka got to the byline twice and sent in two crosses. Yeah. Danger that, that someone should have gambled and got on the end of, but they didn't. Albion survived two let-offs there, really. So when he did get in and, and Emil smith wrote turned it over, it wasn't a surprise because he was really their only threat. Um, yeah. So I was a bit disappointed with that, I've got to be honest. Um, but other than that, I think the Pepe goal was a stunner, um, really. Again, Townsend to left two on one. He probably should show him down the line, but he is 2v1. Um, Carl Bartley then, kind of doesn't get out quick enough either, does he? Because he kind of, Townsend points toward Bartley to say, come and help me out because I've got Chambers running this side. And it, there's just that little bit of room that he's given, isn't there? Yeah, and so he said it cost 72 million quid. I mean, it's about the first thing he's done in an Arsenal shirt, isn't it? I mean, it, <laughs> he, he's like, it's just, it is what it is. And then look, Williams scores a cracking free kick at the end that Sam Johnson could do absolutely nothing about. So 
I, on another day, that game could easily end 2-2. Mm. Um, but is what it is. That is Albion season. Missed chances, particularly over the last 10, 11, 12 games, with the exception of Leicester away. Um, I mean, I'm just repeating what Allardyce says every week, but we all know they've missed huge chances in games, huge mm. chances. Um, and that is why they are where they are in tables, why they've gone down. And Allardyce said on Friday, he said, based on performances, they shouldn't be out of the bottom three at the moment in time. They shouldn't be. Mm. Um, but they should absolutely be 18th. Yeah. They absolutely should be 18th. And they should be in with a chance of surviving in these three games. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, they're not. They've just not been clinical enough. Yeah, they haven't. Um, but Pereira, like I said, has stood out. I mean, he's just grown and grown as, as the Premier League season's gone on, really. I mean, does that does that performance maybe add a couple million quid to his price tag or or does it convince Albion to try and say, look, maybe we've try, got to try and keep hold of Mateus, try and get one season out of him. If we can get back up, then obviously he sticks around. If not, then you kind of agree to part ways because he's such a special player and he's, he's one where... If you can keep him, he would absolutely tear up the championship, which we've seen before from him. Yeah, so I, uh, this is obviously the big, like the big, the, the thing everyone wants to know. Really, can can Albion keep Mateus Pereira? I mean, the answer is probably not. Um, mm. And and you've got to be. I think you've got to be really realistic about this situation. So I asked Sam about it on Friday. I said, Sam, can can if Albion, if and when relegation happens, can Albion keep Pereira next season? And his his words then were. Um, it's going to be very difficult. So it's going mm. to be very, very difficult. It's going to be very, very hard for Pereira. If a Premier League move, if a Premier League offer comes in, the Albion deem is acceptable. It's going to be hard for Pereira to turn that down. He was yeah. stronger last night. Sam was asked the same question last night, uh, and he essentially said no. Mm. He said Albion can't keep Pereira. The quotes are on the Express and Star website. They're, they're not leading the story. If you read the story last night from the manager reaction from the game, the Pereira quotes are included in there. Um, Sam actually says, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but he says, no, um, I don't. I, it's, it's very, very, very unlikely Mateus Pereira will be um, an Albion player next season. And I know people are going to point at Saar at Watford and Brindena at Norwich and this, that and the other. But I think with Pereira, what you've got to accept is that two things, really. What One, he has done everything he can in the last two years for Albion. That you, yeah. it, you genuinely couldn't ask any more from him over the last two years. He was the best player in the championship last year, hands down. The best player. Um, he was absolutely magical. He was a huge reason why Albion won promotion to the Premier League. He's a huge reason why performances have been so good in the second half since Allardyce has come in, since that initial dodgy period under Allardyce. Um, mm. He's got better and better and better and better. And the thing with... Everyone's saying, oh, could we get one more year from him? A bit like with Jay Rodriguez, things like that is. We're now talking about Pereira and we're not talking about Pereira going to a bottom six Premier League club next season. Yeah. It's not, with a great respect, Jay Rodriguez and Burnley or that's gone. He's, he's elevated himself to mid-table at worst. Mm. Um, he deserves... To, to be playing for a top half Premier League club. He deserves to be playing for a club that's got European aspirations. And I think they'll be the clubs that come in for him now. Mm. Um, so I just don't think you can deprive him that move. Um, I, I look, Last night, he's good, for me, he's good enough to play for Arsenal. Yeah, um, in that, in that a, 10 position for sure. If Can you really, and especially is they going to need a number 10 because Odegaard will probably go back to Real Madrid. Mm. Emil smith is a really good player, but you can't expect him to be sort of playing that number 10 role every single week um, at his age. So could Arsenal come in for him? I think they could. I think some, I think I really think some big clubs could come in for him. You can't, you can't expect them to say, okay, I'll stick on my 30 grand a week in the championship and give you a year. Yeah. Um, when, Arsenal could offer him 70 grand a week. I mean, it's just not, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be right. If Arsenal are willing to pay the fee, look, they've got to pay the fee. He's, yeah. a, he's definitely a 30 million pound player now. My 18 to 25 million prediction is, is absolute nonsense the way he's taken it to the next level. Um, someone's got to come in and give Albion a fair price for him. And Albion will hold out for, for a price that's right. But he doesn't, he, he doesn't owe Albion anything. He has done absolutely everything he possibly can for the club over the last two years. They're going to make a massive profit on him. Um, 
I actually think it'd be wrong to hold him back. Yeah, I, I, know, I know what you mean. I mean, what next then for Albion? I mean, you've you've got three games left this season. Are you playing? Are you playing for 18th? Is that what you're playing for? Are you playing to try and you know keep the mood as high as possible heading into the summer? What 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 what's the aim now for Albion? What's the end game? So, it's so my store. One of my stories tomorrow. Well, I asked Allardyce after the game yesterday. You've got three games left. Is this the chance to experiment? Yeah. Look, Grady, Carlin Grant, Romain Sawyers, Jade Livermore, um, I can think of many others. They, they're big players for Albion. They, mm. They're big, big players. Livermore and Sawyers were huge players last season. Carlin Grant, Grady and Garner have cost an awful lot of money. Um, are you going to experiment in these last three games? And Sam effectively said no. Um, mm. He said there might be one or two, one, he said really might make one change. Um, but he effectively said he's going to pick, he's going to pick players based on how they perform in training. Um, and if they perform, not, if they perform well enough, then they'll, they'll pick them. So obviously he doesn't feel these players have been performing well enough in training. It's mm. like with the great, I mean, everyone knows I'm a, I'm a big Hal Robson Carney fan. I thought he was absolutely sensational last year. Technically, I think he's absolutely superb, but Look, we're at, he's not. He's out of contract in the summer. He's not been offered a new deal yet. Yeah, it's getting to the point now where you're kind of expecting how Robson Carney will leave the club. If the, if Albion mm. really, really wanted to keep him, surely they would have offered him a deal by now. The fact that how Robson Carney is coming on last night ahead of Carlin Grant mm. speaks an awful lot to me. Remain Sawyer's. So he wasn't on the bench. Yeah, two kids on it. So um, obviously Sam's not happy with, with a lot of these players. So. These three games, I think we'll see. It's interesting. I think he, if he can experiment, he will. But he's not. He's not big on it. And if and if you don't see players playing, sort of what I would call high-profile players playing in these games, I think you've got very serious questions about the future. I think if mm -hmm. Sam Allardyce does stay, I think he'd be saying to Luke Dowling, "You've got to find a buyer for these people. They're not. They're not part of my plan." So I think that's the big. That's the really interesting thing from the last three games. Sam is desperate to beat West Ham at home. Yeah. Absolutely desperate to beat West Ham at home. We'll do the story later in the week, but he spoke about it on Thursday, Friday last week. He spoke about it last night. Um, he really wants to have fans in the Hawthorns and give them a win in person. Mm. Um, Liverpool is what it is. It's Liverpool at the end of the day. Leeds away, last game of the season. They're comfortably mid-table. They want to play for their fans. Yeah. Having obviously relegated. I mean, it's, it's a, it really is a dead rubber. Um so the biggest game from now to the end of the season is West Ham at home. Yeah. Um, because I can assure you, Allardyce is absolutely determined to win it. He is absolutely desperate to win that game. Yeah, do you think that game will... Because I'm, I'm, I don't know if a lot of fans will be watching on TV, a lot of fans will be following coverage, and they'll have their thoughts on on Big Sam. Will getting a win in front of, albeit a, a small percentage of, of, of fans in the Hawthorns, will that, will that win people over? Yeah, I don't know if he, I don't know if he has to win people over anymore. Really, like I think, I think there's a lot of people who do. I think the majority of fans want Sam Allardyce to be manager next season. We've said on this mm. podcast before, no one can guarantee you promotion. Nobody can. No one can guarantee you a place in the top two. But I genuinely believe Sam can guarantee you a place in the top six. Yeah. Um, and I think it, that's that's the that's the bet you've got to take. Really, I don't I don't see how, I don't see how Albion can. Can turn that down um, in many ways. I think it. I think it'll come down to Sam. Look, I said for weeks and months, he's grown into the job. I think he wants to stay. Mm. I truly, truly think he does want to stay. But there's just been the last three or four days, the last two presses. There's just been an air that may, has made me less sure with some of his comments. He made a comment mm. on on Friday that Friday that he really wants to talk to his family about it. He really wants to get their views on how a season of championship will impact them. Yeah. Um, he's made it clear it will come down to being given a budget that will get Alvin back up again. I do think he'll get that personally, So, but we'll see. I think, personally, I think Sam holds a lot of the cards. I mean, there are there are fans who don't who, who don't want him, and they don't and they don't want him, I think, because he's Sam Allardyce. Yeah. Um, but I said, I was having a chat last night about it, and I was thinking... Forget if Sam Allardyce wasn't manager, if 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 someone else had been manager for the last fifteen games, whatever he's had, 
and Albion mm. had played as well as they played, I think any everyone would want that manager to stay. Yeah. I think Sam has got this reputation as not playing great football. Um, he's obviously 66 years old, so there's no there's not a lot of longevity in it. But Albion have played really good football. Yeah. They've played really good football. They, 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 and I think anyone who says otherwise is just being a bit, I think that's just a bit lazy, really. I think that's mm. leading the narrative to Allardyce um, rather than actually what's happened. Um, if fans don't want him, obviously that's, that's their right. But then uh, obviously there's some really exciting candidates out there. Chris Wilder would obviously be an exciting appointment. Um, and that, that, that's perfectly fine. But I mean, I think, I, I don't. I think it's very hard to make a case that Allardyce hasn't done enough to deserve the job. Yeah. Um, in the time he's been in charge, I really think he has, and I think I think the vast majority of fans think that as well. Uh, I'd agree with you, Joe. Um, and you did touch on it there. Um, Grady Dean Garner did come on. I thought it was just great to see him on the pitch, to be honest, for for Albion because we haven't seen much of him. I thought he came in. I think he looked he looked decent as well. I mean, I, I thought he was he performed better than than Callum Robinson did. I thought he showed some neat neat touches. Helped out defensively as well. He'll be a massive player for the Baggies in the Championship next season, given given that he hangs around. I, I doubt there'll be too much interest for him, given that he's been in and out of the squad and in and out of the eleven. But he could be massive. Of course, he could, yeah, he could be absolutely. This, this is going to be this is the interesting thing. Look, Grady. I think Grady's had a tough year. Um, mm. There's no doubt about it. He's had a tough year. He's um, you got to remember, he's a young lad. Um, mm. For all intents and purposes, he was going to be a West Ham player. He, look, there's nothing wrong with Grady Dean Garner wanting to be a West Ham player. He came through at West Ham. He's played through every age group. Everyone expected him to break into the first team this season. Well, he did. Yeah. He's broken before, but everyone expects to sort of cement himself as a first team regular at West Ham this season. I can remember quotes coming out in the summer. Who's that striker they had up front? Um, Haller? Haller? Sebastian Haller. Sebastian Allaire, they he was saying they played in a friendly and Grady set up a couple of got I don't know if it was one goal or two, but he said and he was saying, Oh, Halaire was saying, Oh, I can't wait to play with Grady this season. Mm. Um and for all intents and purposes, it looked very much like Grady was gonna have a big role at West Ham to play. They sold him very quickly. Um he then moved to Birmingham or wherever he lives, lock, mm. in lockdown. He can't see anyone, he's completely on his own, he's away from home, he's 22 years old, I think. It was, it's not easy. Um, and obviously, he's had, he's had a bit of a dip in form as well. I think, yeah, I think, look, I think the last season will be a massive learning curve. This season, sorry, will be a massive learning curve for him. Look, he's too good a player, isn't he? Mm. He's too good a player not to come back strong. Um, and he's a, he's a star in the championship. There's, there's no other way to say it. He is an absolute star in the championship. You think last season when Albion had a wobble um, around, was it? When was it January time? Yeah, December, January was December, it? January time. Um, 20 games unbeaten to start a championship season. They had a wobble when Grady got injured. Yeah. Um, so he will be massive next season. I've got absolutely no doubt about it. He will he will come good and um he, he will show us the the, the the Dean Garner we saw last season. I truly believe that. Right. Um Albion will be in the in the championship next season, but it's not all bad news, Joe. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. I'm all right with it, mate. I'm all right with it at this moment in time. I'm generally all right with it. Yeah, and I've come up with a list of reasons to look forward to the Championship show, and I'm sure you'll agree with all of these. Uh, on. First one, and it's probably the biggest, no VAR. How good That's is that? That's coming from you, Mr. Yeah. Like. You've got an I Love VAR t-shirt, haven't you? I, I don't, but um, I, I, I was always a fan. I was always pushing for VAR. But I tell you what, the ball will hit the back of the net. You'll take one quick glance at the lino. See the flag stays down, and you can just celebrate. You can just celebrate and know that nothing's going to get dragged back. You're not going to be, you're not going to be offside by the width of a pencil. It will all be fine, and you can just celebrate. I mean, how 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 nice will that be? Um, number two, fans will be back in grounds. Fingers crossed. Fans will be back. That'll be yeah, great to see. Yeah. Uh, number three, you'll hate this one. Preston Pie, mate. We didn't have it last time, though, did you? Well, I wasn't there. I don't think they had it, though, mate. They had a Thai green curry. That'll be disappointing. <laughs> First your bubble there, haven't I? You have. You know what? You have, the one thing that made me really sad this season was that I couldn't do Chelsea away. Yeah, that, I'm disappointed about that. Even I, even me and this horrible food chat, I, I really hope we do get Chelsea away in the cup. Oh, I was just going to say that FA Cup, get, 
give us give him give give Chelsea to Albion. Chelsea away, Stamford Bridge. I'll take that. Um good grounds to go to. Some some decent grounds. None of these none of these balls, these soulless balls. How was the Emirates, by the way? No, oh, I love it, mate. Good ground, I but it, yeah. I mean with fans in there, I, I don't I'm not I'm not sold on it. Um no, it's beautiful. That, that... It was beautiful. The way they let us in as well was quality. Like we literally walked around the pitch. It was like, it was, it was class. Mm. Um, right by it. Yeah. The pitch was amazing. I love the Emirates. I just love it. I think it's mm. the top draw ground. It's one that I was saying last night that some grounds look new, even though they're not. Yeah. And it's like 15 years old, but it still looks quality. Yeah. Um, Emirates has got it for me. I think it's one of the best in the country. Love it. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. But either way, there are some good ones in the championship, some proper grounds. There's some questionable ones as well. I'll give you that. <laughs> but there are some good grounds. Um, Not Luton away. Luton away is the best when you walk through people's back gardens to get there. People will think I'm making that up. I'm not. You literally walk through people's back gardens. Wi-Fi is abysmal though. Yeah, and there's a pillar in front of the goal. Oh you yeah, there, you can't see, oh. can't see one of the goals. It is ridiculous. So goal Albion, not a clue who. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every game's a winnable one. Every game. Every game's Al- a winnable one. Yeah. Yeah. You're not. You're not playing Man City and, and hoping to lose by two. You, every game you go into, you're hoping to win, and you're you're almost expecting that you'll 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 go and give it a game. Um, also, Albion should be up there in the table. Let's be honest. If Albion uh, stick to stick to how they've been in in previous seasons in the Championship, should be a good year. You always got got in playoffs minimum. For Albion, normally. Um, on top of that, different derbies, Coventry and Blues. Would you take them? Not Coventry. It's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're giving it a bit of a... I think you're trying a bit hard now, mate, to be honest. Hey, if, if Palace Brighton's a derby, I'm having Coventry. All right, you can have it. I don't think I don't think Albion fans are going to be getting too excited about that game, though, to be honest. Yeah, you never know. Uh, EFL on Quest is actually half decent. Right, yeah. Still it's, hard. It's, yeah. it's hard decent I'm struggling now um, and the last one no silly kickoff times yeah three o'clock Saturday job done unless you get moved to Friday night and God help us or Sunday they got a lot of Sunday games in the championship last season that Albion did because they yeah. were good at, they're going to be up there so, and if Allardyce is a manager um, they are a bit box office aren't they for a champ- for, in the championship oh, so yeah. they will get a lot of um, they will get a lot of games moved but yeah, look, all I'll say on that is, in terms of, I was when Albion first got promoted, and when we were looking, for, we were looking at the Premier League. I was kind of like, mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I've never worked in the Premier League. Like, mm. it was, a, it, it was obviously nice to say you're a Premier League reporter and that, and go to these grounds. But I wasn't that bothered about it. If I'm being brutally honest, I was like, I love the Championship. It's a proper league. Um, anyone could beat anyone, like you said. I like winning every week. I love winning. Yeah, <laughs> like, winning's just great. Wanna, win um winning so much more enjoyable than getting beat and i was all aboard i was like oh, i'd be sad to leave the championship now i've got to be honest i want to be in the premier league mm. now it's now i've experienced it now i get it I've, i finally get why players are so premier league obsessed and players are premier league obsessed they mm. all want to be in the premier league um so yeah look i want to get back to the premier league as soon as possible but Albion finishing the top two next season, which I'm hoping they will, will be a very, very enjoyable journey. I'd take a season like Norwich's this year. You go it's down, you me. bounce straight back up. Just, just absolutely walk it. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. That'd or, be great. Do you know what would be great? Like a, a proper, like, you know, like red in that one season, like 100 points. Yeah. Just absolutely obliterate the league. Like everyone looks at West Brom, they're like, can't be these. Yeah, I'll be well, I'll be well happy with that. You'd yeah, be like the Man City of the Championship. Be nice to have an anxious less, less, anxious less season. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No anxiety. Just nothing, just... nothing riding on the last three or four games. Just, no, just promotion yeah. secured, championship secured. Go in the last four games knowing you have to win two to win the league. Already up. Yeah. Fine. I'll take that. We don't need one. <laughs> Wouldn't be bad, would it? No, it'd be good. It'd be Wouldn't good. be bad. Shall we get on to questions? Come on then. All right, first one. Oh my god, it's on the screen. Oh wow, look at this! Yeah, Brim Reese. That's asks, not the first question. Of all the issues that are going on at Albion at the minute, you go up, you come up with that. That's this poor genuine, production. Gen, that is poor gen, production. This was genuinely one of the first questions I got asked on the tweet. 
hundred percent. If you just said then one of the first, one of, not the first, one of the first. So you have picked this. This is a Luke Hatfield choice. Well, don't I'm worry about the ownership, mate. don't worry about the manager, don't worry about the players. This question, this is what everyone's listening to this podcast for. Look, we start low, build up. <laughs> this is a uh, low, this is a low bar, mate. <laughs> which championship grounds food are you most looking forward to? Um I was looking forward to Preston, but now you've you've burst my bubble. I'm glad I burst your bubble. You deserve your bubble to be burst. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still going to say it. Joe, what about you? Oh, I can't even remember what we had at well, do you know? Do you know what was good? Derby. We, we, had, a, we had an early kickoff. They, they supplied us with, um, it was like uh, breakfast butties. So you had like bacon, sausage, stick it on some toast, a bit of brown sauce. Uh, that was that was I didn't go to Derby. Um I wasn't I was covering Walsall then, but um Fulham oh, yeah. was Fulham was good, wasn't it? Fulham with breakfast Fulham, was good. Fulham. Uh, I think you've got you've got fond memories of Fulham because it was your first game as well. And I did pick and mix. I'm a big fan of any club that does pick and mix. Yeah. I mean, and let's be honest, they're coming down, aren't they? Yeah, they're coming down, yeah. So I'm yeah. having Fulham. Okay, fair enough. Uh Hamish, any ownership updates? John Percy seems to allude to in his latest tweet. Um, so I'm literally going to, a lot of people have asked this question and I'm literally going to repeat exactly what I said last week, um, which I think is how the situation stands. So Gouch and Lai is Albion's owner. There's some people who don't think he is, but he is. Um, <laughs> and the, obviously he wants to sell. Gouch and Lai wants to sell Albion. He wants to sell. That's no great big secret. What mm. he wants is a price somewhere near what he paid for it, which was in the in the region of 200 billion pounds. Albion yeah. are not worth 200 million pounds. Now, Gouch and Lai is basically impossible to speak to, get hold of, for, to, for us in the media to have any contact with him. So what we know for a fact, what we know for a fact is, well, we know for a fact that Gouch and I has got no interest really in being an Albion owner. We know he's not mm. going to invest. We think, we think. He's becoming slightly more desperate to sell. We think yeah. his financial position isn't as strong as it was when he first bought the club. But ev no one, me, anyone else, no one is getting information from Lai's camp. Nobody. Mm. Absolutely nobody. Because he's in China, he's completely secretive, we can't get access to him. We know there are people interested in buying Albion. We know there are parties who would like to buy the club. These parties are where the information is coming from that Albion are willing, that lies willing to sell, basically, and that mm. effectively is becoming more desperate. So what we're hearing is, well, that Lai wants to sell, there's interested parties, but nobody can get near Lai's asking price, which is in the region of 200, 180 million pounds, mm. because that's what he paid for it, and he, need, and he wants that money back, which is completely understandable from Lai's point of view. Now, I've said before that because we don't know lie, because we're not speaking to lie really, we can't get really pick it. I thought I, I was speaking to someone close to them at one stage, but it's all gone a bit struggling with that again. So we don't know who's, who's he's in talks with really, how many parties he's in talks with, and if he's close to sell it. Mm. Um, if, if, if he is to sell, it could come as a surprise. Not as a surprise because we know he wants to sell, but it could move very, very quickly. He could mm. be a lot further down the line than I realise or anyone else realises. And all of a sudden we're told Albion um, are about to be taken over or in, in the midst of being taken over. So it could happen. The, the thing why I believe, and I could be wrong, but the thing why I believe Albion are not close to a takeover mm. um, is because... Allardyce is going to hold talks this week about his future. Now, I, I, I still think Allardyce will stay, but I can't see Allardyce. Allardyce will not stay if a takeover is close and he mm. isn't their man to stay on. Because he did it in Newcastle. He got the Newcastle job, they got taken over, and he talked about it in a press conference months ago. He said he felt in limbo. He said he genuinely didn't know what to do with himself. He was, he was at a loss. He said he knew the new owners didn't want him. He knew he wasn't going to be able to buy the players he wanted. He, wanted, he wasn't going to be able to bring in the players he wanted to bring in. And he knew it was just a recipe for disaster. He was on borrowed time straight away. Mm. So, and this is said with the greatest respect to Sam Allardyce, because I think he's done a fantastic job, really. A new owner probably isn't going to want Sam Allardyce as their new manager. 
Yeah. You you probably they're gonna want someone who's a little bit cooler is that a word do you know what i mean like do you know what i mean you want to make it yeah hard and like you want to be you don't you, it's no it's, it's no disrespect because allardyce has proven himself to be a very good manager but you probably don't want the 66 year old that's been around the block a little bit you probably want the cool like i don't know like a frank lampard yeah or like someone uh, yeah someone who's a rip off of pep guardiola or you got that's what owners are like really they, they mm. come in and they're going to want to make changes they're going to want to stamp their authority on it they're going to want to make a big song and dance about we're going to invest some money we're going to play football the right way this that and the other so look maybe some allardyce will hold talks with the board this week maybe they'll say look we're, we're really close to a takeover and maybe that's what allardyce holds up and go thanks but no thanks and if he does say no thanks, I think we could maybe start to speculate that a takeover is pro- might be closer. Um, yeah. But I think if Allardyce signs, not signs a new deal, because he won't sign a new deal, he's, current, he, he's, 18, he's got 18 months in his contract. We well, signed an 18-month deal, it's this break clause. Mm. Um, but I think if he stays, I think that's a good indication that a takeover isn't close, mm. isn't going to happen in the next month, two months, three months, that Allardyce believes... He will get to December probably, certainly without a takeover because, and by that time he would have backed himself to have Albion in the top two, in the top four, yeah. Um, and then you couldn't, you couldn't sack him. Um, but he will not want to be Allardyce will not want to have a meeting with Albion's board this week, and they'll say, and they'll, right, okay, yeah, I'll take, the, I'll carry on next season, and then in three weeks' time, mm. it's new owners. He will not want that. Yeah. Um, so I think that tells you a lot. Fair, fair. Next one comes from Leo Watkins. What does the future hold for Robert Snodgrass with our main midfielders leaving? I could see him playing in a midfield three in his later years, especially at championship level. Wouldn't surprise me if he was maybe in a 10 role. I could see him doing that. I could see him. I agree with Leo Watkins. I could see him in a midfield three. Um, and I would like to actually said that when he signed. He said he can play in two positions. He can play out wide or he can play in a midfield three. Hmm. Midfield is, is 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 the real interesting one. It's a, obviously we've said it a million times before. Everyone's on loan in terms of okay, you could lose Conor Gallagher and um, Ainsley Maitland Niles. None of them are going to be at the club next season, I don't think. Um, no. Certainly not Conor Gallagher and Ainsley Maitland Niles, which um, they won't be. Um, I doubt you could. Well, I, I very 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 much doubt you could will be, but. Oh, who's the any... sorts of egos midfield, by the way? Because yeah, uh, they, need, yeah. they need to have a look at themselves. Um, I mean, look, I think it's fair to say with you, Kuzlov, he is more suited to the Premier League than La Liga. Yeah. Um, there's absolutely no way he wouldn't be playing for Lutzat Viga if he was putting these performances for them. And But he is a combative, physical, holding midfield. I think he just is suited to the English game. Um, mm-hmm. I think he'll be in, in, in England this, this year, next year, sorry. Um, from what we're hearing, he's very, very happy at Albion. He really likes living in, in the area. So yeah. um, who knows? I think, I mean, look, he's going to be, I think, I'm 90% sure he will be a Premier League player next season, but you never know. But Mm. yeah, I think everyone expects additions in that central midfield area. Um, But Snodgrass could definitely play there. He could, he could definitely play there. Um, And obviously you've got Livermore, Sawyer, so I can see what the future holds are there. But Mm. if Albion don't buy you Kuzlu, I think Sam will definitely buy, if Sam stays, he will definitely buy a midfielder like your Kuzlu. Yeah. Um, so that'd be one addition. But yeah, I could see, I can definitely see Snodgrass in there, especially when you've got to think, Albion have got so much strength out wide mm-hmm. um, in Grady, in Cullen Robinson, um, Matt Phillips. Um, who have I forgotten? Pereira. Well, yeah, but he won't be there next season. He, he might be. He won't be. But yeah, they've got quality elsewhere, basically. Yeah. Um, Ronnie, what do you make of Allardyce's comments at, to Sky after the match? A lot of was a lot was said about this, Joe. A lot of people seem to think that they they were they were almost worried. They thought this seems to, like you said, kind of maybe backtrack on the general thought that that Allardyce would most likely be sticking around. No, I don't, I don't think that's true. Um, if I'm being honest. I think he's just fed up of being asked the question. Um, and he did, he did, I don't really understand um, post-match interviews because he does Sky twice. So... Does he? 
Yeah, so at pitch side, you've obviously got all the boards that they stand in front of. Yeah. And Allardyce speaks to Sky, as in who showed the game, Sky Sports, whatever, Sky, if it was on Sky Sports 1 or whatever, he, yeah. show, he, he speaks in front of the board to Sky, and then he comes into the written presser, but first on the written presser is Sky Sports News. Oh, right. So you have to, people have to remember that by the time he's got to me, and we'll count me and Sky Sports News in the same presser here. Yeah. He's done Sky. He's done Premier League Productions. He's done a radio interview, which will be, because of COVID, radio stations are sharing the audio. Yeah. Um, so if it's like Talk Sport, that'll go to BBC WM, for example, and Five Live or whatever. And then he's done the club media as well. Yeah. So we're his fifth interview. Of which, let's be honest, a lot of the questions are the same. He's getting asked mm. the same thing. Now, Sam has sat down with Sam sits down with the writtens before every game and after every game. I can promise you, he has been asked a million times about his future, and he's been asked a million times about his future in every which way, shape, or form. Yeah. People have worded the questions slightly differently to try and get a little bit more information, to try and sort of get to the answer. The answer's a really boring one. He will know when he's had his meeting with the board. Mm. That's the answer. That's the answer. This the, he's going to have a meeting with the board. He's going to talk it through. And if he thinks it's the right thing to stay on and stay on, and if he doesn't think it's the right thing to stay on, he won't stay on. And nothing will be decided before that meeting. We mm. hope that meeting will be that week, this week. We expect the meeting to be this week. Um, but yeah, I think he's just, how many times can he say, um, I mean, I'm going to base my decision on the meeting with the board this week. He said it so many times. I, I, honestly, it frustrates me. I wish, I, mean, I don't want to knock over journalists, but I just wish they, there's a bit of consistency. Um, mm. Honestly, I do, I'd honestly, I do feel for him. Like, he, he has asked the same thing time and time and time again. It must be frustrating. And to be fair to him, I think he handles it pretty well because he was on, It was the game was on BT last night, not Sky, by the way. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Well. yeah um, and, the, the person who was questioning post-match, they were trying so hard to get more out of him. And to be fair to it, to him, he was he made a little bit of a joke about it because he, he could have quite easily snapped. I mean, a lot of managers do. They, they tend to bite back if you kind of try and hammer that same question to him. But to be fair to him, he was, he was good in the way he handled it. Um, so it must be frustrating, but I, I can understand what he'd wear at him, to be, to be honest. Um, Russ, uh, what are you most worried about given the uh, Albion's current situation? Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to go to something on the pitch. I think it's the midfield. I think that midfield needs some serious work. I know we've talked about Snodgrass potentially playing there. He could do that. But we saw how much they missed a holding midfielder and it looks like they're not going to have a holding midfielder if, if Yukushlu does does move on. And I'm sure there'll be Premier League interest in him. Someone must have to go for him. If anyone who needs any kind of metal in midfield. Um, so that's a big one for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm... What's the biggest concern? Um, be fair to say the ownership. Yeah, like, I, like that is a concern. I think Lai's a dreadful owner, and I'd, I'll, I'll like be throwing a pie when he does go. But but he does leave Albion alone. Like Albion mm. are run on their own, and they really boring, really boring. Sorry to disappoint people. They run very well. They run yeah. very well. Albion have run very well. In the championship in particular, they are run very well. Um, they will be very competitive next season. They will have a decent budget next season, probably because they've sold Pereira and Sam Johnston. But I believe, I strongly believe they'll be in the position um, to give it a real good go next season. So I'm not overly concerned. If Allardyce stays, he will definitely sign a midfielder like Yukuslu. He will definitely yeah. sign a striker like Dianga. Um So I'm not overly concerned. The thing that probably concerns me the most is Carlin Grant and Grady Dean Garner. Mm. And this is even based on what I said. I, I truly believe Grady will shine. I truly believe that. Um, but I think Albion are in a position where even if Big Sam's their manager, yeah. and we all know Big Sam is every inch a leader and does things his own way, I think even with Big Sam as well, Albion are in a position where they have to say to whoever the manager is, 
Big Sam or otherwise, you've got to get a tune out of these players. Yeah. Um, because, A, they are very good championship players. We know that. We saw Grady last season. Um, Carlin Grant scored 17 goals for Huddersfield. It shouldn't be the hardest job in the world to get Grady and Carlin Grant playing well in the championship. It should be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, but B, Albion have put so much, have spent so much money on them and given them such long contracts that they need, they need a tune out of them because their value has diminished rapidly. Yeah. Um, if Albion, wanted, if Albion do want to offload Colin Grant and Grady Dean Gunner this summer, they are going to get nowhere near. I just don't think they're going to be able to sell them. Um, mm. Because for Colin Grant, for example, it's two and a half million over six years, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, is anyone going to pay five, six? Is anyone gonna, he's probably worth five, six million pounds now, I'd say, Colin Grant. Seven, eight million at a push. No yeah. one's buying in the Premier League. No one in the Premier League's going. I know the man to keep us up is Carl and Grant. Yeah. And no one in the championship is spending seven, eight million pounds on a player. And even that isn't what Albion would want for him. Um, so they've got to find a, whoever the manager is, has got to find a way to get a tune out of Grant um, and a tune out of Grady. But I'm sure that, I'm sure they will because they are mm. good players. Yeah. Uh, next one, Grand Johnny. From a personal perspective, would you rather have next season in the championship with fans back or stay in the Prem but with no fans still. That, that's an interesting one. I'd always go for fans back. I'll, I'd take the, the dip into the championship and have fans back because the atmosphere is just, it's just not the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got no doubt about it. I, no, no, it's no, not even a thought in my mind. I can't wait for it. I honestly can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. I can't wait to just hear a celebration for a goal. Like, it sounds, it's such a weird thing to, mm. like, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I like struggling to like hear the person next to you. That that's that's what I want. Yeah, and just song. Like, it's very look. I've said we said a million times. And like, I'm this. I'm not missing going to games because I'm going to them. I'm very very fortunate about that. Very very fortunate that I can go to games. Um, but there's other things I'm massively missing. Um, and a cheer, just like the emotion, just that noise when you know an attack's coming. Imagine yeah. the noise when Pereira picked that that ball yesterday. That it would have oh. built, wouldn't it? That'd have been like a is it a crescendo? Is that the right word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Bills and Bill, and you'd know he was getting closer because of, like everyone would be getting on their feet and it would be like just little moments like that. Do you know what um, I miss? I miss and you've just kind of reminded me of it. Do you know when like the, the ball breaks and you hear the sound of the seats hitting the backs of the seats when everyone stands up at yeah, the same time? Oh that. I've just got goosebumps thinking about that. I miss that noise. There's no doubt, there's no the Premier League without fans is not worth a championship with them. No way. Nah, no chance. Ben Perkins, has anyone in the squad got a relegation release clause? So, it's a difficult question to answer because um, obviously there's only so many people who negotiate a contract. So, it, if, if it, it'll probably be when the player signs, the three people in the room will be Luke Dowling, the player, and the agent. Mm. Um, Lou Dowling would never say the player's probably not going to say the agent might say yeah. um, but if the agent doesn't say it's difficult to find out but from what I understand and it is only what I understand I'm pretty confident in it but from what I understand um, there are no release clauses mm. I think Albin felt they were a bit burnt in the past by relegation release clauses um, Johnny Evans was a big one recently, wasn't Johnny it? Evans, yeah. Um, Who's it? I mean, he was been, he's been doing really well at Leicester as well. Well, it's a damn good player, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that's good news, though. That's yeah, I'm news. pretty confident on that. Carl Latham, other than Sam, who would be the options to be in charge next season, in your opinion? Uh, Chris Wilder is the obvious one. I've kind of already mentioned Frank Lampard, although I don't. I'm not completely sold on that. Uh, Stephen Gerrard is a name you've mentioned before that you'd like to see. Um, if Albion were without a manager, I think that would be a good move. It would be an interesting one, to say the least. Um, I, I think the, I think you just got to stick with Sam, though, personally. Yeah, I mean, I'd like... So, obviously, if it's not Sam, so if, if it isn't Sam, we'll, we'll, we'll work from that point. We've spoke about yeah. Sam, obviously, um, at length. Chris Wilder, obviously, probably the best CB in football over the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, Literally, I've one bad season. Um, 
and that was last year. There's two issues with Wilder. Well, maybe maybe more actually, but <laughs> Albion got a lot of wingers, a lot yeah. of wingers, um, and Wilder doesn't play wingers. It's yeah, um, one point. <laughs> so that is a, a slight concern with Wilder, and obviously. It's different. You don't, I don't want to knock Wilder because he has got the best CV in football over the last 10 to He'd be an amazing appointment. He'd be an amazing yeah. appointment. Um, he did spend money badly last season. He did. Yeah. But I think everyone's got to just let him be. I mean, like the jobs he's done over the last 10, 12 years, he deserves the odd hiccup. He really does. Yeah, he would be He would be a great appointment. Um, Frank Lampard's not for me. Um, look, it's a weird one with Frank Lampard. I thought he did a bang out for his job at Derby. I've got to be honest. I agree with they you. Were, they were sixth and uh who was it before him? Philip Cocker. Uh, was Cocker before or after? Philip Cocker was before, yeah. Um uh, finished sixth under Philip. Yeah, I think he was before. I don't know, but I thought Rooney went there because Cocker was there. Oh he might have actually. Yeah. Have a Google. I don't remember who was in charge before Frank Lampard, you know. Whoever was in charge before Frank Lampard finished was it Rowett? In my opinion, no. Um, that was seems forever ago. That seems forever ago. Whoever was in charge, they finished sixth for Derby. Frank Lampard also finished sixth for Derby. With Mason Mount. With Mason Mount, who is without doubt Chelsea's best player. Him and Kante are Chelsea's best players. Forget yeah. like Havertz and Werner and everyone else. Pulisic. Pulisic is good, but Mount and, and um, Kante are their best players. So... Yeah. They finished sixth. All, all, all Lampard did was get them one stage further in the playoffs. He got them to the final, whereas whoever it was, I think that was Rowett, got them to, they got beat in the semi-finals. Yeah. He got absolutely tactically done in that playoff semi-final final to Villa. Oh, uh, yeah. He was completely outthought by Dean Smith. I, I, look, credit where it's due. His first season at Chelsea was really good. Um, he, and he play, he does play, a, he does play a lot of good, he did develop a lot of young players. For me, the perfect job for Lampard is England on the 21s. Mm. I think that would be a good job for him. I, I just don't think he's... There's, there's, I, I hold the Albion job at such high esteem. Um, I, I, I just don't see how you can give the job to Lampard over Wilder. Mm. There's, no, there's nothing in... There's, Lampard's done nothing compared to Wilder. Yeah. Nothing. Um, so... Not for me. Gerard would be ace, but he's not. He's he's going to go straight to the Premier League, I think. Yeah. Um, the one I would like, I've said before, um, is Steve Cooper at Swansea. Yeah. Um, I think he, he plays good football. I think he's got something about him. I think he's. You know, I think he's um, destined for a good career in the game. So if Swansea don't go up, I'd be knocking on his door and saying, "We've got a bigger budget than Swansea." We've got some good yeah. players here. Do you fancy it? Mm. Um, yeah. Do you reckon Brentford bought all the playoffs again, by the way? Probably. Probably. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a trip to that new ground, though. I've not been there yet. Not been there. Uh, James Downing, think we'll get Callum Morton in and around the squad next season, going to be short of strikers. I don't know. It's a difficult one. So, smashing lad Callum Morton... Um, Gives his absolute all. He did an interview with the program actually, where he said he'll, he'll come back to Albion in the summer and he wants talks on his future. So he wants, either wants he wants to be playing. Basically, he's not gonna he's yeah. not gonna settle for not playing. Um, and if that means going out on loan again next season, he's happy to go out on loan again next season. He has he has been hampered by injuries a lot this season. He has. Mm. So I think if you're being honest, his natural progression would ideally be a full season in League One. Yeah. He did League Two with Northampton. That's what Albion have done with Alex Palmer, isn't it? And, and Morton. They've gone League Two, they've gone League One. Yeah. But obviously Palmer's basically played every week for Lincoln, whereas Morton hasn't. Um, I think we know, look, we think Albion will buy a Diagna type striker. Probably won't be Diagna, I don't think, but Allardyce always has sort of a presence up there. Yeah. If we've got him, whoever that magical mystery man is, you've got Callum Robinson and Carlin Grant who can play up front and who really, as we've said, you need to get a tune out of Carlin Grant. Whether mm. it's on the left or whether it's up front, you need to get a tune out of him. Um, 
I just wonder for next season whether St Morton's long term interests to have a full season in League One. That would be my prediction anyway. Mm. Uh, this is kind of following on from it. Announce Gale, says Andrew Bishop. Has he just signed a new deal at Newcastle? Has he signed a new deal? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has, yeah. I'm pretty sure well, he's signed a new deal. Mm, mm. But he's only messing about. Yeah. Like, move on. Uh, what level do you think Mateus Pereira is playing at, says Hamish? For me, there's no reason he couldn't be playing for a team challenging for Europe or higher. You've kind of covered this. I think he is quite solidly in that kind of anywhere from sixth to about 11th, 12th in the Premier League. Yeah, I agree. He's 6th to 11th, and if he shines there, he can go higher. Yeah. Uh, ideal replacement for Pereira, says Boggy Boys. Uh, for me, it has to be at least from Reading, 8 million quid. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because if you're, if you're after a 10, it's, it's, it's a tricky position to fill because... You know, it's, you need a re, you need a really quality player there, but you don't want to spend fortunes on, on that player. I don't think. Almost, almost, I think you don't replace him, in the sense that I think I think the strike, I think whoever, whatever striker Albion signed this summer, I think he replaces Pereira, in the sense mm. that you have to remember that Albion got out of the championship last season, with, without, an out and out centre forward. There was mm. no. How Robson Carno is a deep line in, in chat manager terms, football manager terms. How Robson Carno is a deep line forward. Yeah. Um, he's not, he's not, he's not the Agner, is he? Just, everyone knows what I mean by that. He's not an out and out centre forward. Charlie yeah. Austin didn't really suit the system, but it was playing. If Albin had the Agner up front last season or a striker of that mould, they would have won the league. There, there's mm. absolutely no doubt about it. And I think. Four two three one. We spoke about it at length millions of times, but I don't like it really. Um, I think I, I, I want I want to play with three in the middle. I think Sam does. Mm. So you need two wide men. Well, you know, you know, front three. So you, you're gonna have Grady there. You're gonna have Matt Phillips there. You're gonna have maybe Robert Snodgrass there. You're gonna have Colin Grant there. You're gonna have Callum Robinson there in those wide areas. You buy a good striker. And you and you and you put those players around him. Mm. I think you should have the goals to get up personally. Yeah, um, I think we might just have to hold our hands up with Matthias and say, "You're magical, mate. Thanks very much. It's been an absolute pleasure." Yeah, he's and not, not too, make someone replace him either because they're not going to, are they? Do you know what I mean? He's he's just no one's going to fill his boots because no, he's so special. If you have a front three of a new striker. Dean Garner one side, Grant on the other, with Robinson coming in off the bench, and obviously you know we know we know what he can do in the in the championship. I think I think you've got enough quality. Yeah, or Rob, I think Robinson's the star in the championship. So Robinson's starting either or. Yeah, there's there's so much there. There's so much yeah. there. Matt Phillips can play central midfield as well. Like it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to yeah, it's interesting. There's some good players there. There's some good players there. All Albion fans, money aside, if you could keep Pereira or you could look at the club, who would it be and why? So it'd be Pereira. Um, yeah. They are Albion's two outstanding players. There's no doubt about it. And I'm, obviously, I think you could lose absolutely amazing. The only thing I'd say is, I, I, I would, I, I think it's easier for a recruitment team to find the Yakuzlu than it is to find the Pereira. Yeah. I think it would be hard to find, very, very hard to find the Pereira. Um, so for that reason, yeah, definitely Pereira. Fair enough. Uh, John Francis, why is Sam Allardyce seen as the right man? If we fail to beat Liverpool, it will be three wins in 14 games since we signed you because Lou and he's the Mets and Diania. Is he getting a bit of an easy ride? I personally think you can't necessarily judge on just results, I think you got to judge on performances, and Albion's performances have improved. Yeah, I think I, I'd be amazed if anyone didn't think Albion's performance has improved under Allardyce. They have missed half all the chances. They have been mm. unlucky. They should definitely should have more points than they've got. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think when you consider the the place where Allardyce started from to where the team is now, I think he's. I, I don't think anyone can say there hasn't been a massive improvement. 
Did anyone really think that, that the group of players we had when Allardyce was going to arrive were going to survive? Does anyone truly believe that? I think people that. probably looked at Big Sam and thought he's never been relegated from the Premier League. Like, if anyone's keeping us up, it's him. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. But did anyone truly believe when he arrived that, that, that there was no Maitland Niles, there was no Yukos Lula? There was no, did anyone truly believe that squad was going to stay out? I don't think anyone did, really. Mm. Um, I don't. I mean, it was a big, it was a big, big job, um, and, and they have they have improved significantly. Um, mm. Yeah, he, I, I, I've said it a million times. I think he's done enough to be kept on. I really do. Hamza Derby, what has happened to Nathan Ferguson? I forgot he existed until this morning. That Palace kit man is getting an easy ride with his kit. Certainly is. Um, I, for one, I think it's just a shame to see that he's not he's not. Push on. Obviously, injuries had just uh, he's had a torrid eighteen months or so now, but it is a shame to see that. But in the same respect, like when are Albion going to get the money from? Because that seems to have just been, I mean, almost swept under the rug. So the money thing is, for this is just from what I understand, um, sort of in football in general, is clubs are very the buying club and the selling club are very very reluctant to go to tribunal. Mm. They always, they don't, they basically don't trust them, um, and neither side trusts them. And so, they, the buying club always think they pay too much. The selling club always think they don't get enough, um, and that's why it takes so long for tribunals to happen because clubs often it's a last resort, really. Yeah. Like clubs try and negotiate um, a deal. Um, so, and Palace aren't going to want to go to tribunal. <laughs> I don't no. think now because because they they did they did they did agree to pay eleven million pounds for Nathan Ferguson. That yeah. was agreed. Um, 11, I think it was eleven million with a one million pound add-on. That fee was agreed and ready to go. So a tribunal is going to look at that and go, "All right, he's not kicked a ball for eighteen months, or however long it is." Mm. I think it was Swansea away or Cardiff away his last game yeah. um, for Albion. So. They are going to look at that, but they're also going to look at, well, hang on, he's probably still got 15 years in the game. You could, this could be, he could be your right back for the next 15 years. So you've still got to pay a hefty price. So I don't think Albion will get near the 11 million. They would get a hefty fee from a tribunal, you would imagine, just because mm. he has he has played. They have been willing to pay that in the past. But I think, I think um, yeah, I just think Palace are going to be reluctant to go to tribunal. Albion, Albion are going to want to improve their squad. And no one's... No one's going to be flush with cash this summer. Mm. Like, Abbey have a strong budget. They're going to have parachute payments. They're probably going to have the money from the Pereira and Johnston. But there was hardly any money spent in the championship in January. COVID is a thing. It is affecting finances. You're just not going to see money banded about in the Football League. So it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me if we saw an addition or two from Palace in the summer. Mm. Scour their squad lists. I think, I think I'm pretty sure... In the summer, last summer, Albion were keen to take Andros Townsend. This was before sort of Grady signed and this yeah. and the other. I think they wanted Andros Townsend, and that would have been part of the Ferguson fee, if you like. Mm. Um, this is all based on my. This is not based on any knowledge at all. But I think if you look at Palace's squad, there may be a player or two that Albion may feel they can pinch. Mm that will offset Ferguson's value where a deal could be struck. The one I was, I thought of last night and I haven't, I, this is, this is just pie in the sky. Um, yeah. Is Jack Butland. Yeah. If Johnston was to leave, if Albion don't think Button's ready to be a number one or isn't good enough to be a number one and Palmer isn't either. And Josh Griffiths will probably go out and loan again. Can Butland really keep sitting on a bench? He's too good to sit on a bench, isn't he? Oh. That he was poor for Stoke in the championship. Yeah, I know, but he had a, it, it's all world collapse, mate. He was yeah. about to be England number one, and then he was he lost his place. Well, didn't lose his place to Pickford, but Pickford got the nod, and that was it. He didn't get a move. He was mm. yeah. You have got to remember they are human beings, like they are, um, and and failed moves and disappointments do affect them. So he can't be happy. He's just sitting on the bench every week at Palace. He's far mm. too good a goalkeeper, but yeah, I'd have a have a little have a little look at Palace's squad. I would, because um, you never know. There could be um, 
someone there that, that could offset that Ferguson thing. Never know. Right. Um, that does us for questions. Thanks to everyone for sending them in. And I'm really sorry if we didn't get round to yours, but I do feel like we covered the majority of topics with questions asked. Uh, Joe, quickly, I mean, Liverpool up next. I mean, who really gives a damn, to be honest? Don't care, mate. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> all, you, all you're playing for now, like I said in the previous podcast, and probably everyone will be saying now, is it's just play for pride. I mean, you don't want to be, you don't want to go out losing like four or five nil. Um, no, you want to be strong. The big game, yeah. the big game is the, the, the last home game, though, isn't it? Yeah, the big game. Look, it's Liverpool. That'll rate that. The players will be up for it. It's Liverpool. Lisbon. They are champions. They are, mm-hmm. as it stands, they are still the defending champions. Um, Sam Allardyce will never let a team fold. He just won't let it happen. They'll have them fired up. He'll have them given them their all. Um, look, Liverpool should win the game, shouldn't they? Of course they should. Yeah. Like, look at the players they've got. But yeah. Is what it is, mate. With, look, I'm so I'm. I said at the start of this podcast, I'm relieved we've gone down because we can start talking about the future. We can start building for the championship. We can start building for a promotion push. That's where we are now. It's Allardyce is really hurt that there's three games still to play. He's so disappointed that they haven't taken it to the final game, and he's got to go through these like dead rubbers, if you like. He's not happy about it one bit. Mm. Um, but that's what they are. The dead rubbers. We go really. We're going through the motions, aren't we? We're just getting them done. Tick them off, move on to the next one. Hopefully beat West Ham at home. Um, because it would be nice to get a win at home this season in front of some fans and and, and move on from there. Busy summer. Busy summer indeed, right, Joe. That just about does us, mate, unless you've got anything else to add. No, no, I'm, I'm good with that, mate. You happy with your little video cameo? Uh more than happy. Just happy to you see be, your mate. face, mate. Oh, that's very see kind. Your face. Um, right, as always, if you could rate and review this via your podcast provider, we'd really appreciate that. Obviously, helps other people find the podcast as well. Uh, but from me, from Joe, a fond farewell. <laughs>